Is, is sugar at the root of a lot of problems? And when I say sugar, I know there's a lot added to processed foods, but also um, the type of sugar that comes from like the bagels and, and those type of products that you mentioned. Um, yes and no. I mean, when you're eating a bagel, white bread, the body converts it into sugar. It enters the bloodstream as glucose. It enters the bloodstream relatively rapidly. What I'm saying right now is pizza and a bagel and white bread and croissants are almost the same as eating pure sugar. Not much difference. So yes, it's these high glycemic carbohydrates, which include sugar and honey and maple syrup, but also include white bread and bagels and croissants and pizza and all this stuff that people are constantly flooding their body with sugar. Mm -hmm. and, they, and in doing so, it creates an excessive insulin response. Excess hormones, excess insulin, excess estrogen, excess IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one, high level of these hormones are, promote cancer. And it's well, it's well supported in the scientific literature, not controversial. Every nutritional scientist and most physicians know excess estrogen promotes breast cancer and excess insulin promotes fat weight gain, fat storage, fat cells produce estrogen. You know, I mean, these, these hormones like IGF-1 are pro-angiogenic. The word angiogenic means they promote the most of new, new blood vessel growth to fuel the growth of fat. These are fat promoting hormones. Hormones that fuel the growth of fat and promote growth in cellular replication also promote cancer, allow cancer cells to reclaim a blood supply. Cancer cells secrete angiogenesis promoting hormones as well. Um, so what I'm saying right now is these foods that are hormonally unfavorable, like high glycemic carbohydrates and, animal, and a lot of animal products in the diet, because animal products, the high, level of, the high level of protein and the high level of high biological protein from animal products, ex it produces excessive IGF-1 in the body. And it's this IGF-1 insulin sandwich from macaroni and cheese, pizza, hamburgers, heroes, spaghetti and meatballs, combining the high glycemic carbohydrate with the high level of animal products that creates this hormonal milieu that maximally promotes cancer. It's like the American diet has been designed to promote cancer. I, I say this diet's been designed by ISIS. That's my joke. But the point is you couldn't figure, scientists couldn't get together in a, in a room and create a more cancer-causing diet than the ones Americans are eating right now. So we're not going to solve that issue with, with putting billions of dollars into some kind of research. We're only going to solve that issue with educating the public how to live a healthy life and avoid the cause of cancer. We could do it right now. We could solve our health care crisis. We can reduce medical expenditures by 70%. We can stop people from dying needlessly. We can extend human lifespan dramatically. We can stop all these people having strokes and being put in nursing homes in their 40s and 50s and 60s. We can stop dementia. In other words, we have so much power to control our personal health, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And we can give people superpowers. We can give doctors superpowers to educate and inform people to really get them, magically get them well, if they can motivate them, if they learn the skill and the art to educate and motivate people to make change, to make beneficial changes in the way they're eating. That's where the superpowers come from. It's not going to come from a pill. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come from radiation and chemotherapy. Those effects are, are minimal. I was speaking to a group of oncologists last month. I was lecturing to a group of oncologists on the role of nutrition in preventing cancer and treating cancer. And they were talking to me and having a conversation after, in the, the Q&A period. And they were telling me that for most cancers, the, the cost of chemotherapy is over $200,000 a year. And the lifespan extension people get is between three to six months from that $200,000 of expenditures. So the point is, is that obviously this is not cost effective to extend people's life three or four months by $200,000. And, and, and I was showing them the studies that show that the same foods the, and the same dietary portfolio of anti-cancer food that prevents cancer has been shown to extend lifespan dramatically and prevent recurrence of cancers when, even when people have cancer. So we're talking here when people have cancer, let's say breast cancer, and we study women with breast cancer who eat some flax seeds. Just from eating some flax seeds, their risk of breast cancer recurrence and breast cancer death goes down by 70%, followed over that 10-year period. If we feed them green vegetables, cruciferous green vegetables in higher amounts, the risk of death from cancer or cancer recurrence goes down by over 50%. We can look at almost any one of these protective foods, 
greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, all these foods that individually show protective effects against cancer. But we put a, a dietary portfolio together with all these anti-cancer foods. It doesn't just prevent cancer, it also helps people who have cancer live longer and it's more effective than kind of common chemotherapy. I'm doing a study right now with Northern Arizona University. I'm on the faculty of the Health Science Division of Northern Arizona University. We're doing what we've named the Nutritarian Women's Health Study. We're recruiting women from all over the United States who are pledging to eat a diet rich in G-bombs. That means a diet that includes these anti-cancer foods, the green vegetables, the G-bombs, G-B-O-M-B-S. It stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. We want women to eat these anti-cancer foods every single day, to have a big salad once a day, to put flax seeds in their oatmeal with some berries on top, to eat some cooked mushrooms in their vegetable dish at night. We want them to eat these anti-cancer foods. We're going to track these people over decades. I'm going to show them and to, to actually protect their lives, motivate people, motivate them, educate them, help them live longer, but also what we can demonstrate to society, how we can show these long-term studies of putting together a dietary portfolio that includes all these factors that have anti-cancer effects. That's where the money's at, you know. In other words, we know flax seeds protect against cancer, we know berries protect against cancer, but what if we eat all these dietary portfolio with all these foods that protect against cancer? That's the, that's the what a nutritarian diet is.